What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel and I'm today here with Catalina from Tech with Catalina yes. and also she is exposed to a lot of Spanish people, Spanish community, blockchain community and today we will be talking about ICO scams because we recently read an article that 20% of the ICO space currently uh, is scam. So it was done by some kind of research group, I don't remember honestly, but we have this number 20% and so we started discussing and Catalina said, you know what, it's, it's, prob it's probably like 90%. So. Uh, what, what do you think about the ICO space? Uh, give me your opinions and I will give you my opinions. Sure. Well, after we saw the boom last year, uh, we can um, definitely uh, identify that people are seeing ICOs as an easy way of making money and these people are taking advantage of the lack of education of people regarding this topic and in block blockchain in general, right? So for me, it's crucial to provide the information, provide the value and in order for people to make their own decisions and have the ability and the skills to make their own conclusions. Because sometimes we rely on other people's opinion uh, wh where to put our money, right? So, and yeah, that is yeah. what people should stop doing in my opinion. So in, in that regard, I totally agree that you should build your own picture of the reality and what is going on and what you invest in. And that is also what I do on my channel. It's all about the basic knowledge. However, so I do agree that there, are, there is a lot of hype and people see ICOs as an easy way of making money. Yes. However, I see also a negative trend in the crypto space, namely that whenever you see a new project coming out, they are immediately labeled as a scam. So whenever you True. try to do anything in cryptocurrencies nowadays, you will be immediately labeled as a scam. And so I see this as, a, as something negative. Because yes, although there are many, we've seen many scams, it is true, but uh, this has led to this overreaction in the market that you know everything is a scam. There are many, and many, many uh, misconceptions. Uh, people think that Bitcoin is a company. Bitcoin is not a company, it's not a product. Uh, Bitcoin is not a scam and blockchain technology either. So a lot of people think that even. Uh, so uh, yes, when it comes to Bitcoin, but specifically also okay. when it comes to like ICO projects. Okay. okay. And uh, so this is a negative trend I see personally. That yes, 90% of projects will fail. Maybe even 98% of projects in the blockchain space will fail. Yeah. But something to realize is that also 90% of normal businesses fail. True. And uh, most of normal businesses fail also. And it but when we talk about blockchain, we need to analyze the things that we're going to discuss right now. Is, for example, why do we need a blockchain? Most ICOs yes. don't need a blockchain. Or how many levels of decentralization there is in the market? Well, and and right? also, it is not just you know one solution, one silver bullet for everything. Sure. Some ICOs are saying that you know what we are a working company already. We yeah. have our business already, and we just need a token to add some kind of level of decentralization. But you need to realize, as an investor, that if the company disappears, the token is worthless. So there is one type of ICO, and this is totally yes. fine. Because of course, if you are a Bitcoin maximalist, you might say this is not a good ICO. Yeah. It should it should be a decentralized protocol that is the only way that you can have a cryptocurrency and by the way everything that is not bitcoin is also a scam that is what True. the maximalists would say then you have you have something in between uh, people who say that it should be decentralized to such an extent that if the company disappears uh, the token should still be uh, valuable that would be like at the highest level of what an ico could be right one profile as you said yeah 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 we have like the, the other side of the coin we have uh, a lot of services and companies that are going to issue their own token as well as we know what a token token is or smart uh, or ICOs or smart contracts running on the Ethereum blockchain for example and they issue their own um, ICOs which are uh, digital assets right that they can be programmed uh, and with, with different features and characteristics to have different functionalities and we're going to see a lot of airlines uh, company services issuing their own ICOs yeah. as well so that is another I, I, I type. think so I think so and for me personally I'm fine with all of these three types okay so type number one is that you have just cryptocurrency Bitcoin that's it yes type number two you can do an ICO but your ICO should be decentralized if your company fails your token should still be valuable mm -hmm. and type number three is that you as a company do a token but the token becomes worthless if you as a company fail so for me I, I'm fine with all of them and I, I think there is innovation in all three of them I can give you an example so for example uh, a lot of criticism is uh, is uh, directed towards this type three uh, cryptocurrency ICO space that okay yeah, uh, people true. people are saying why do you need a token because your company, if it fails, the token fails. Yes. Well, there, there are many use cases for that um, uh, nonetheless. So yes, for example, true. you can have, for example, a gaming company, they have their game on their central server running as it is, but then they say, you know what, let's make in-game currency decentralized. Let's make the in-game currency decentralized so that 
players know that we as a company cannot print more of it yeah. and suddenly it kind of works as a currency because you can use it in the game world but you can also trade it outside the gaming world and so this is just an example of how you have a centralized solution and you just add a small piece of decentralization in there and it is cool i mean if the game fails if the game shuts down the token is worthless but while the game is running your token is global you can trade it all over the world maybe it's even used for buying groceries because it is it is tradable 24 7 anyone can buy it anyone can sell, sell it yeah so, I so think there are many many different types of and people should know what they are looking for and what they are analyzing and they should be aware of what to analyze first and how many steps. And yeah. also, I mean, this is a very important knowledge for everyone because if you are new and you don't understand that there are different types of ICOs, different sure. types of tokens, you might not know this, uh, uh, these different differences between what an ICO is because an ICO can be many different things. And this yeah. is also true if you think about, for example, Goldman Sachs, if you think all about uh, JP Morgan or, and other investment banks who are in the space, they are having tremendous trouble understanding the space sure. and uh, understanding what is a payment token, what is a security token, what is a utility token, what is a centralized token, what is a decentralized token. All of them are fitting in the space somehow. All of them, uh, all of them attract different types of investors. Yep. Uh, some investors like, for example, tokens that are connected to a company. Some investors will say it is a scam, but it, it's all fine. They, it, they are attracting different kinds of people with different interests. Yeah. And uh, what I'm saying is also that there is a huge opportunity for people like you who watch this channel and who educate yourself to be valuable to those organizations with a lot of money who are looking to enter the space. Yeah. Because imagine if you want to get a career in normal finance, how would you do that? You would spend the five years at the university, maybe then you try to work up the ladder. I mean, it is an enormous pr process, but in the blockchain space, I'm telling you currently, it is a lot of opportunity. You can move very quickly, learn this, go to your you know, local investment bank and show yourself, show that you know all the different ICO types, show that you know what you're doing, show that you know uh, what the blockchain space really is and I think you can bring a lot of value so to your community. That where way. should, let, let's give people a little bit of guidance, where should they find this information and three steps that they can do to analyze uh, different kinds of ICOs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So something that we talked uh, talk about that is very important is number one, of course, the team. Take a look at the team, understand what where they're coming from, try to uh, look at their uh, LinkedIn, try to look at their github if there is any of course you cannot really trust linkedin and github altogether because it's they're all online profiles they can be yeah. manipulated so therefore i would say the next step is to actually go and try to find some videos some uh, live interviews so you see many live interviews on uh, my channel for True, example that's very important first of all you need to you need to know that we are not only investing in technology that is something very important to say and highlight this is technology uh, but we're also investing in humans humans are the one who are going to make this happen right yeah, 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 yeah. so uh, how uh, we have to analyze the many different things for example the first thing in my opinion is how active they are in the community and how they are experienced they are in the blockchain space and the engineers are the brain of the projects so as you said before github yeah is for sure. ab absolutely take a look at github try to find live interviews where they answer questions from the chat where they're completely exposed to the chat and just defending their project then look at the white paper do you understand the white paper? If not, probably it is not your fault, it's fault with the white paper because if they cannot under, uh, explain their project simply, they probably do not understand their project themselves. You should be understanding it very, very in a fast way and in a clear way, what they are doing, why they are doing what they're doing and how they are going to execute that. Yeah, if yeah, you are yeah. like reading for like 10 minutes and you still don't know what this is all about, that is a red flag. That is a red flag. For sure. Uh, and the, the third step, what was the third step we were talking about? Well, what we said before, like whether they need a blockchain or not, depending on what type of ICO you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. If it is uh, like an ICO that is aiming to be decentralized, uh, many ICOs or most ICOs don't need a, no, don't need a blockchain. So because this, this technology is less efficient and it is more expensive right now. So that is something that you need to ask yourself uh, also and how fast people can use what they are doing right mm. uh, if it is something that can be implemented if it is something that this can be scalable yeah, yeah. right uh, so many factors and aspects that we can uh, analyze about yeah. ICOs. So, 
basically ask yourself a few questions. Number one, are they removing middlemen? If yes, in that case, they need a blockchain. Are they doing something that is bringing transparency to their industry? If yes, they need a blockchain. And um, is it the case that they need, for example, global transactions, past transactions? If they need an immutable ledger, they might need a blockchain. But uh, all in all, I think it's, uh, we still need to see how it all develops. I mean, I think it's very easy for us to say currently that, for example, 90% of ICOs do not need a blockchain. But I, I think we still need to be humble when it comes to this. Uh, and we still need to see how all of these projects develop. As I said, ma majority of them will fail. No question about that. But the future of ICOs and the future of blockchain we still don't know exactly how it's going to be applied, how it's going it's to so be used. It's so uncertain. Even this year, how this yeah, is going yeah, to yeah. develop this year is so super uncertain. The, 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 what I would suggest to people is get educated about the fundamentals of this technology, about ICOs in general, know where you're putting your money. Uh, and it's, uh, as I always say, blockchain is not a quick diet, it is a lifestyle, it's right? A lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, Every yeah. single day you need to know what's going on. You, you have your channel, the news, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. keep on educating yourself like every single day and be smart yeah. and talk to people and be involved in the community, try to travel. So guys, I hope you learned a lot. I hope you are more educated. We definitely hope that you are a bit smarter after watching this video. Be absolutely sure to smash the likes, subscribe, click the bell button so that you're always up to date. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much, Catalina. Oh, thank you, Ivan. And thank you guys. Thank you guys. Bye. <laughs>